Okay, next on the agenda is um, council reports. Anyone? I'm going for a change. Council. <laughs> Thank you. Um, last week I had the um, privilege of <clears throat> attending uh, Tourism Manitoba hosted a meeting uh, here in town to uh, discuss our destination area assets. It was a really interesting look um, at, uh, so, so uh, research was done before they came and then they came and visited the community as a tourist um, and then she does a SWOT analysis of our strengths, our weaknesses and, and uh, she presented that and then um, the discussion afterward I think was the most important part of that meeting. Um, the challenges of housing in Nipua when you're trying to attract tourism, come to Nipua, but don't stay because there's nowhere for you yet. Uh, so there was a lot of really creative ideas that came out at that meeting and it was uh, interesting to hear an outsider's perspective of what we have that's ready, uh, what we have that we should capitalize on better because you don't think of it when you live here. Um, so I really enjoyed that and it was really a, an interesting time. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, we did the trans annual general meeting for the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway Association. So this is Highway 16 all the way to Pacific Ocean, wherever it ends. And it's a, you know, a group promoting uh, good highway uh, construction highway safety and economic development along and uh, part of that meeting was connecting the CAO for that group with our EDAM, our rural EDAM, I can't remember what it was called, but, uh, the economic, Rural Economic Development Office from Manitoba. And it was also this, uh, that uh, Travel Manitoba meeting which was pretty good. Um, a lot, of, a lot of talking happened there, and I don't know if it's good to mention the fact that they thought that, you know, maybe even Margaret Lawrence home could be a bed and breakfast, like a, no, Airbnb. That was one of the, the and I thought it was a brilliant idea, you know, Margaret Lawrence home needs money, so why not transform rooms, because the people that are coming to see Margaret Lawrence can afford to pay a subscription. Yeah, sure, we're not going to see any part of it, so I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, and then uh, sun Sunday, um, I got to be at the, um, the championship game for the uh, basketball league in town here, the, the finale. And uh, there were a lot of medals and trophies to hand out then. It was an exciting, nail biting final game. And just so everybody knows, Bryce Perry is my nephew, not my son. <laughs> he, was, he was on the winning team. But, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, I guess the, the big one is, is when we had our uh, physician's recruitment and retention meeting today. And, you know, I hear a lot, of, I hear a lot about how difficult it is to, to get a doctor and to um, get an appointment and, and get lined up and how long it takes to wait for everything. We had what was supposed to be an hour-long discussion, um, ended up being two hours plus, that dealt with exactly how people get trained to be doctors in Manitoba, how we, uh, we bring people from other countries and the journey they have to take. We actually have a few people around here who are doctors, but they're not accredited for Manitoba. And just because you're accredited in Saskatchewan does not allow you to practice in Manitoba until you do the right application form, which I thought was really different. Um, there was a thing on CBC about blue ceiling doctors when they come to Canada, they get tested, they get go through all the requirements and they get their blue seal and the blue seal would then allow you to practice anywhere in Canada. Um, that's a progressive conservative push apparently 
When I asked the doctors about it, they said it, it, it's possible but very, very difficult to, um, to get it to happen. And um, so we're working, you know, we're, we have a, an account, we have money for that. We're working currently on getting one uh, doctor uh, through, uh, he didn't get in the IMG program, but we're also going to see if we can spark that up because there's a second draft tomorrow. If it, not all the spots got filled, so he still might get in on that. So they've, they've got two people in the wings. They've got our, our medical clinic operates where they, you know, they uh, are hospital doctors, they're emergency room doctors, and they're clinic doctors. And right now, uh, Prairie Mountain Health is supplying uh, a few doctors to come in and help with the ER. So they'll do a 24-hour shift. And so our doctors since December have decided to do the 24-hour shift at the ER and not do clinic that day. And that is creating a little, you know, it's a little more difficult for them to get their clinics done, but it's making it easier when they are doing their clinic time. And it's taking some of the stress off by having the extra doctors in. And one of the things we did say is that um, doctors coming out now want to be hospital doctors more than general practitioners. And we're, I think we have three um, residences coming. Um, I think one's up here already. It's, it's real student week, so Mary Ellen Clark and, and, and her team are taking some students and showing them what meat was all about, and then the doctors are also doing that and, and having them do procedures and that's it safe. So, yeah, it was a very exciting meeting. And we have two of our local um, graduates from NACI who are currently in the medical program that I know of. And when asked, when I asked, you know, what is the possibility of them coming back to their own home community? The tendency is um, students don't like to come back and doctor their classrooms. So they want to choose a, a different community. A takeaway from it was when new doctors come, um, the unknown housing, and you know, like settlement services. What do we do for housing? Uh, some communities have a house for doctors to come in, local doctors to come in. What do they do for child care? So it's, you know, it's a normal thing at a higher level, and they don't get paid. Um, like when they start actually working and building up their, their practice, it takes six weeks to get to their first paycheck. And they're like any other student, heavy with debt. And I think that's probably what I'm talking about. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, anyone else? I'm sorry, but... you know, I usually try to start first because it's hard to talk about these great reports, uh, definitely. Uh, it's been a busy two weeks. Uh, on March 9th, uh, the Committee for Volunteer and Environmentalism met. So that's uh, our Honorable Mayor Headley and myself, we met, and we're, we're finishing up, I think, the building stages of this new committee and we're probably going to be bringing it to council in the near future uh, to, to get approval moving forward with some exciting, hopefully some exciting programming that will help support NEPWA. And uh, I know we're, we're getting closer and closer to bringing it to you to, to show you what we're thinking, uh, how it can help support NEPWA. On March 14th, uh, we had some restorative justice and uh, some of my colleagues here were there with me. And, you know, it's nice to see that we're getting back into the flow of helping, uh, helping in that sense. March the 15th, uh, there was a Western Manitoba Regional Library meeting, and it was strictly just working on policy and things like that, so not a lot to report there. But uh, the Westlake meeting that I had on March 15th was exciting because we are talking about how uh, tomorrow night at the Legion, the LPN program, March 22nd, uh, Anyone that's interested, they're going to be one of the presenters, Westlake Employment Services, but so will Settlement uh, Services will be there also, along with ACC, who's going to be presenting uh, how it will work here in Nipua. So if anyone's interested how it will work, or if they want to help support someone or get more information, definitely something important to go to. 
also with Westlake, uh, very excited that on April 25th we're, we're going to be part of the job fair. That's We're also teaming. It's, it's going to be at Arts Forward uh, from 3 to 7 p.m. on the 25th. And it's really nice when we can hold local events uh, right here in our community for our students and for our, our citizens that are in looking for employment. There's a lot of good employment out there and really exciting to see how that's going. We're also using uh, Marilyn Crew, who's our EPO here, so that's really great too. She's the one that's kind of, I think, putting everything together. So it takes someone to help glue everything together. She's doing an excellent job with that too. And the last one I'll just say is uh, the Rossburn Sub Subdivision Trail Association. Uh, we're, we're fortunate. Neep was going to be hosting the AGM this year. So uh, that's just our, our annual general meeting, and we've been trying to contract out some local caterers here uh, in order to, we're going to have people coming from all around our region, from Russell all the way here, and we, we'd like to host it in one of our local facilities, and I think we're looking at Arts Forward, but we're just confirming if that'll work. Okay. Oh, give me a date. <laughs> <laughs> I said I might have a little pull there. No. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were contacted yet. From, uh, okay. Just give me a date. Okay, so that's going to be around April 27th. So uh, there's someone else that's the lead on, on programming our AGM. And thanks to our CEO, she's helping share some information, also some contact info with catering and uh, just to get some options, but it'll be a really nice turnout, and it was a great place to host, so we're really proud to host the event there. And that's everything from me. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Nadeau. Anyone else? Councillor Durham. I think the shortest one, <laughs> uh, and I promise I will. On March 7th, the Human Resources Committee met to discuss a number of staffing issues uh, within the town, but under the Freedom of Information and Privacy Agreement Act, we are not allowed to discuss the conversations of that meeting. That is our next <laughs> session. <laughs> take, take notes. My copy quite is Handyman meeting met today at lunch. There was 414 trips in the month of February. Uh, some exciting stuff that Michelle at hand is working with Handyman on. So they are doing a celebrations uh, dinner theater show trip. It is planned for mid-April, and there will be a casino trip for the end of April. So just keep watching our Facebook page, uh, Handman Nipua, and I will have those uh, posts up probably, what are we today, Tuesday, probably by Thursday. The information will be up about those. Um, I just wanted to touch briefly on uh, last Friday, our days off school program at Arts Forward. We got to go to the Yellowhead and use the ice bikes. The kids had an absolute blast with it. Uh, I've helped Lindsay, we've got some advertising set up for spring break and they will be running um, ice bike rentals from 10.30 to 11.30 each day during spring break. It's $5 for the rental. They do have to cover their insurance with it, so they do have to, to charge that fee. And everybody does need a helmet and we'll have to check in with Lindsay um, just to book some times on those bikes because there is only three bikes. But the kids had an absolute blast on Friday, so. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Just on your handyman, I watched, I, I didn't pay much attention to who the driver was, but the compassion that was being shown was unreal. They were very good drivers. Yeah. Okay, any other reports? That's a lot of reports, this is a busy group. <laughs> All right, moving on on the agenda, uh, we've got our strategic plan. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, the council and staff have come together to build a strategic plan for the next four years. This will be on our website, Paul? Yeah. Okay, so this will be on the website. I'm not going to read the whole thing or we'll be here for another hour, but I'm going to just touch on some of the high points and uh, and, and just so the residents understand that there is a continual planning uh, that is ongoing within this group. So the, the framework for our future, the strategic plan, as, as one of Manitoba's fastest growing communities, the time is now to plan ahead and welcome the future. We need to imagine what the town will look like, how it will operate, how it will grow, how business will flourish, 
how parks and green space will welcome all and how creativity will thrive. With, uh, within the framework, uh, we've come up with a vision. The vision is growing Nipah as a community of choice through enhanced organizational excellence. Along with that, as any great organization has a, a mission statement, ours is to pr promote growth of safe and caring community by supporting a quality lifestyle, be accountable and transparent through proactive decision-making and policy development, provide beneficial and essential services as a community hub for the region, and create partnerships that enhance rural Manitoba, and encourage and support residents and businesses to invest their time and energy and values into building a strong, environmentally conscious community. Uh, with that, our values are to be responsive to the needs of our residents, to approach work with an unbiased judgment and sensitivity, welcoming, honest, and inclusive, honor our commitments, proactively aspire to set examples that others will follow learning workplace, a learning workplace that grows through our experiences, passionate and dedicated to the serving the community, responsible approach to operations, both financially and environmentally. So what kind of community do we want to be? Well, we have a number of priorities. Priority one, one is a well-balanced growth. Growth management needs to be con to consider the regional context. So along with, well, along with uh, the priority one, there's a number of goals, and then there's a number of supporting actions. I'm not going to read through all of them, uh, but one day in particular is strategically expand infrastructure capacity to an able future development. And again, that's uh, emphasis on strategically. And uh, so again, a, a lot of resources go into uh, our planning to ensure that we are moving forward. The next priority is sustainability and stewardship. Leading Manitoba and Canada with a lagoon design that will represent the first installation of its kind for post-lagoon nitrification a design that can easily replicate, that can be easily replicated by other communities. So the goal of, uh, of, of uh, sustainability and stewardship is ensuring policies and programs and investments uh, support uh, the asset management and retrofitting, repurposing of equipment, buildings and infrastructure providing a safe and reliable water supply, and positioning NEPWA as a leader in innovation, creativity, and technology. Priority three is economic stability and prosperity, aligning resources and create, and create regional partnerships to attract and retain and expand businesses. Um, within the sporting goals there, we've got to uh, capitalize on their strategic location at the intersections of Highway 16 and 5, collaborate and align resources with regional partners to attract a broad range of economic investment, and promote NEPWA as a key regional centre for healthcare, recreation, retail and professional services. Priority four is physical responsibility. Establish, establish a sustainable framework to integrate strategic goals. And our last priority, uh, priority number five, is a uh, vibrant and safe and healthy community. So meeting the needs of the community and promoting healthy living. Uh, we want to uh, uh, advocate within the community and with other levels of government to address the social challenges facing NEPWA, include health, recreation, housing, policing, community inclusion, and safety, to improve access to programs and build stronger community partnerships to facilitate healthy, active lifestyles. So in conclusion, uh, NEPWA is a growing community, proud of its history, its high quality of life and small town feel. 
And tonight we heard about that small town feel, feel from, uh, from Don Wamsley. To best serve those who live and work and play within Nipawan area, it's important to advance our strategic priorities to bring our vision to life. As we proceed, the demand to accomplish many things will always exceed the ability to provide them. So responsible planning will be the key to success. So like I said, it's an excellent document and uh, please go online and, uh, and take a look at it and read it in full. All right. Um, manager of operations, Denise. Thank you. Uh, so we've had a few meetings and some updates. Uh, first one with the golf course. Uh, we've got a update from Santec and 671. The bridge has arrived. The bridge is placed. So I do believe that they probably have a big sigh of relief over there. There's some final cleanup, a few uh, minor alterations to the site. But uh, all the big heavy work is done, which is a big relief there. Uh, on the Park Lake setting, uh, we did a little work happening for a little bit now because they're getting near that spring turnover, so they be cautious now. But uh, I believe that most of the off-site fill that's being hauled out of there has been completed. There's still some riprap being hauled in to uh, supplement some of the work around there. And the last portion of their work will be that they're going to assemble a large bridge within the lake structure just to transport the material across. Uh, they deemed it too high risk to you continue using the culverts with spring turnover. So they're going to be bringing in a temporary bridge structure that will uh, facilitate the movement of material throughout the summer construction on that side. So that'll be the little change in landscape that we'll see over there. Uh, another side note that residents may notice that staff has been busy cleaning up side streets now. They're working, uh, scraping the ice down those and widening them out as best they can, just in preparation again of warmer weather coming so that we can facilitate the flow of water and hopefully get those streets dried up pretty quick for everyone. Uh, other pieces that we've been doing is uh, here in the office, we've been busy on the budget side of things, so I think we pretty much have that finalized and also have an opportunity to review some of that, so that'll be coming up later on in coming meetings. Uh, I think we're just doing a lot of the operation around the community, so. Any questions? I just want to comment. Yeah. I just want to commend our snow clearing crew on that last storm we had a couple weeks ago that we had snow plows in place on, on a Sunday uh, and the streets were opened up. I mean, I, I know it, it's not always perfection, but we aim for excellence and I think we, they, they definitely achieved that by getting out and getting snow moved as quickly as they did in that last storm. Yeah. Excellent comments, uh, Darrell. We, uh, uh, I thought we were being suicidal, but we made the drive into Winnipeg on Sunday morning, and uh, you know the, there was enough opened up for us to get out onto the highway, and uh, it was surprising when we got into Winnipeg, the residential areas, nothing was touched, so big difference. Okay, moving on to correspondence. Minister of Natural Resources, Colleen. Um, just very quickly, this is the funding letter that we received annually, and this particular year we'll be $8,740 to assist with Dutch Elm Disease Management of the Need War. Um, the next one is Trans Canada Trail, just a congratulatory letter. Um, we actually had our application to the 2023 Spring Trail Care Program with the Trans Canada Trail. Uh, it was approved and the funding will be a maximum of $1,250 to get us going in the spring and get some maintenance on the trail. Good. Okay, thank you. Uh, finance. Uh, so you all have received your January financial statements and gone through them. Any questions on that at all? If not, be it resolved that we approve the financial statement for the month end of January 31st, 23. Moved by Councillor Gerard, seconded by <coughs> Councillor Pottinger. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Outstanding utility tax accounts. 
So every quarter or when necessary, we uh, take all of the outstanding accounts and under the authority of the municipal act, request your permission to add them to taxes so that we are able to collect them. Okay. Uh, so the motion reads, whereas section 252 uh, of the municipal act authorizes a municipality to collect debts, in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under the Act, and whereas there are outstanding utility charges which remain unpaid and uncollectible, therefore be it resolved that we approve the addition of six outstanding utility accounts to the tax roll totaling $2,979.67, Don't have to read it. Okay. Moved by Councillor Sisley, seconded by Councillor Kostachuk. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so we're on to the variation application for big and rich. on behalf of Big & Rich, respecting Lot 15, Block 30, Plan 348 of uh, P.T. Walker Avenue, closed at 350 Adelaide Crescent, uh, varying the minimum site area for the proposed lot from a required minimum of 4,900 square feet to a proposed 4,097.9 square feet. Vary the minimum side width for the proposed lot two from the required minimum 50 feet to the proposed 41 within the RS residential single zone unit. Also vary the minimum side yard setback of an existing deck on lot one directly north of lot two with the required two feet to the proposed 1.3 inches and further be it resolved that the existing deck attached to the structure on lot one remain as an open deck and not to be enclosed at any time in the future. Moved by Deputy Mayor Parrott, seconded by uh, Councillor Kostinchuk. Okay. So we, we did have um, public presentation, public meeting on this. Um, one thing that we uh, know is that previously we approved uh, the subdivision for this uh, build, and since the subdivision for that build required variances, those had to be applied for, but the variances at the time have been improved upon, so the actual conditions are better than they were before. We have an engineered drainage plan, which has provided uh, more safety for the, the slopes, and the elevations and grades, and the drainage of water. And the building inspector has been involved all along and has approved the plans. And uh, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with this as a present entity, uh, not, not to anything about the journey as to how we arrived on this day. So based on all the requirements um, that we have to uphold to by the Planning Act, and the Municipal Act, I'll be supporting this. Okay, any other comments? You know, Councilor Abdul. I've always been very transparent. Um, um, I don't like to see a lot of variances. Um, I don't like any variances, but I understand there's a, a, a reason to have some. Uh, it's, I'm really glad to hear Councillor Parrott talk about how it's actually improved from when we last had it. It's shocked to see it on our agenda even because it's, it, it has to be the third time in the last couple months. So, but at least it's making progress towards, uh, towards achieving what it's out to do. Uh, d does this, just to remind me, uh, if someone could tell me, does this lot require a, a wall? A retaining wall? 
this it, one that it has uh, the minimum uh, 45 degree angle slope has been okay. attained by uh, giving the extra side guard on the east so that he has space for doing uh, moving machinery as well as having the required slope -ish. Okay. So, no, that's good to know. Uh, I think that's the only question I had there. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, if not, uh, the resolution has been read. All in favor? Opposed? Potential additional lifeguard costs that are going to have a 5% cover that. 
Uh, absolutely not. Um, okay. We couldn't double or triple that to bring their cost back. It, it just is not something that we're going to recommend because we understand we're always going to incur greater expenses and revenues on a pool. Uh, what this does, though, is it still keeps you in line with other facilities in the region. Uh, so you, you know, you don't want to hear back. It's cheaper to go to this community or that community. So we're just trying to make it reasonable for the people knowing that at the end of the day, there is a big expenditure that is not being covered. Just, that's the part I think I'm trying to illustrate is yeah. that a five percent cost raise in fees yeah. does not solve the thirty to forty thousand dollar operating loss that occurs there annually. Yeah. Right. Councilor um, I think too that um, the public should know that in a time when our budgets, we just went through another budget discussion tonight, and budget numbers are tight and things are are going up in cost and. Um, the more programming and the more uh, utilization that can be user pay rather than everyone pay for certain users, um, that's maybe where you'll see some more increases. Um, things like the pool if, and, and the campground is coming up next. Um, user pay is the way to get more money out of the people who use the products. Um, and you'll maybe see more of that going forward because it's things we do have control of the income. Though it still loses, mm -hmm. we still have to have the people using it who are contributing to it. Yeah, excellent point. Anyone else? If not, the motion reads, be it resolved that we approve the increase of the 2023 20, admission rates for the Nipah Swimming Pool in the amount of 5% for public swimming and programs and 7% for swimming lessons. Moved by. Councillor Nadeau, seconded by Councillor Sisley. Discussions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And yes, River Band Campground. Um, hard to believe this is something we do own and operate that does make money. So when staff looked at what rates we should impose for this year, uh, the only one we're recommending to altering is the full service seasonal at this point, raising it from $650 for the season to $750. I don't know, um, didn't want to add anything to that. No, that's a pretty good summary. Okay. Anything else? Councilor Nadeau, seconded by Councilor Sisley. Discussions? All in favor? Service rate at the Riverbend Campground from 650 to 750 for 2023. Moved by Councillor Pottinger, seconded by Deputy Mayor Parrott. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Policy F1030 call. So this is just an amendment to our refunds and NSF charges policy. The only amendments we made were basically to remove references to items that no longer apply. For example, we used to charge for garbage bag tags and different things, and that isn't on the plate anymore, so we corrected that. Uh, the big item in here is we used to do a non-refundable administration fee of, I think it was $3.75. It mirrored basically what the online um, the um, host of the programs, for example, registering for swimming and whatnot, that they were charging us. Well, those fees are going up, and um, we just doing a flat fee now of five dollars. Yeah. Questions? Anyone else? Yes. Motion is be it resolved that we approve the amendments to the refund and NSF charges policy F1030 to remove references to items that no longer apply and to increase the non refundable administration flat fee of $5. Moved by uh, Councillor Gerard, seconded by Councillor Costin. Questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. charge for a tax certificate from $20, which was uh, under a quite old bylaw, 
putting it more in line with uh, what the market would propose is correct within the industry to forty dollars. Okay. Any questions on that? I, the copy I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. I <laughs> so you got that. The forty, the written number is correct, or right. the um, word below it. Okay, so forty is where we're going. Yes. Okay. Okay. Motion be be it resolved that bylaw number three two two three dash two three be in a bylaw of the town of Nipawa to prescribe a fee for tax certificates be now read for the second time. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Parrott, seconded by Councillor Nadeau. Discussions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And then this will be the third reading on the same. So this will be a recorded vote. Be it resolved that bylaw number 3223-23 be in a bylaw of the town of Nipwa to Prescribe a fee of tax certificates to be now read for the third time in past. Moved by Councilor Kostinchuk, seconded by Councilor Sisley. <laughs> uh, questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Other business? Deputy Mayor Parrott? Well, we have congratulations in order here. Um, our Part 3 building inspector is now covering the Keystone Planning District as well as the Meek One Area Planning District as of last night. We voted that in. He's well respected and known, and he is also being requested to speak to the neighboring municipalities on how to run a planning board. So kudos to you, sir. Yeah, very good. And to Scott. Well. He didn't have to take up the song. Yeah, I thought. I thought you were having a baby. <laughs>